This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. More on that at the end. Hey, what's happening, guys? Today, since this video is sponsored by Solder Stick Wire Connectors, I thought we might talk a little bit about wire, the resistance of wire, and how we can measure it. So, let's start off with saying a piece of wire on its own is going to have very little resistance. Very, very little resistance. There are different things you can do to increase the resistance, but let's put, uh, this is 12 gauge uh, electrical wire. Let's put it on the meter here and just see what we get, if we get anything at all. All right, so it's telling us it's around a half an ohm of resistance on a piece of 12 gauge wire, which is about 18 inches long. Okay. This is some, uh, I think this is 22 gauge, like 25 feet of it here. So let's clip onto this one and see what it says. So this is about eight tenths of an ohm. But are these accurate measurements? Probably not. Generally, anything underneath of an ohm, you need to do what's called a four wire measurement. Now, some multimeters can do that. Generally, handheld meters don't do that, but bench meters can. Uh, there is another way to do it using a power supply, which I'll show you later on. But let me show you how to do it with a four wire uh, bench meter and why it works. Okay, so our wire, we're just going to draw it as a resistor. And what we do to measure resistor is we attach a couple uh, test leads across it. And we attach it to a meter of some sort, you know, your handheld meter which reads the resistance. But if we're trying to read the resistance in something like a piece of wire that's going to be very small, especially under one ohm, we need to do something. And what we can do is we can add a constant current source across that resistor as well. So what we're doing is we're going to use four test leads one pair for the injected current and one that's that's these two here and one pair for the sensing because no current is going to flow into our sense load we are only measuring the voltage developed across the resistance so what we're doing is we're eliminating errors from our test leads from contact resistance anything where a small resistance can be a problem doing the four wire method is much better so let's get set up and do a four wire test okay we're going to start out with this piece of uh the 12 gauge wire and we'll do a two wire measurement on it first with this bench meter so there's our leads now let me zoom up to the meter here Why are you not reading? Oh, because you hooked it to the wrong one, Paul. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. So we got 0.6. Now we're getting 0.052 just because this is a more accurate meter. But now what we're going to do is we are going to add in sense terminal here and if you watch all I'm going to do I'm going to move that down a little bit is connect these in parallel black to black red to red and we will now go into 
before wire mode. And now you see the actual resistance minus the res uh, resistance that is in the test leads, contact resistance, and everything else. So how important is that to you? Well, it depends on what you're doing. That's why I said th this is really only necessary in very low resistance measurements. But that can become a thing, when, especially when you're talking about RF frequencies, which need very precise resistances to function. All right, let's hook up our coil of wire next. So there's our, oops, can I get on there? There is our voltage. That's this, this test lead pretty crappy. Maybe that'll work better. Just some uh, generic test leads. Man, don't really want to go on there. All right, let's try this. Boom. Oh, boy. May have to switch that alligator clip on that one. Should be in a little uncooperative, if you know what I mean. All right, let's try it again. Oh, come on, get on there. One second. All right, everybody, nobody breathe or move. I managed to get everything to stay in place. But as you can see, in this case, the resistance is, is much higher than it was reporting before. It was reporting, what, 0.8? Or no, I'm sorry, much lower, yeah. So it's 0.3. Four wire resistance measurements like I said, are much more sensitive to contact resistance, um, resistance of the leads, and all those sorts of things. So let's measure our big wire one more time. That's the 12 gauge wire will connect in black and red. red and black and let's roll up to the meter get our reading 0.008 all right now I'll show you how you can make this type of reading if you don't have a four wire meter all right so you can see I got the power supply set for one volt at one amp. Now, whoop, let's come down here. Here is our test loop of wire connected. So when I energize the output of the power supply, we're going to get one volt, one amp through this wire, we're gonna get a reading in here of the voltage drop. Because we're using one volt and one amp, then V is equal to I, and whatever we read here will be R. Are you ready? Let's hit it. 3.2 millivolts it's going to be about 300 uh, milliohms 320 milliohms somewhere in that range so on the four wire measurement on the five and a half digit 200,000 count multimeter you know we're getting between 0.8 and 10 milliohms and I misspoke about uh, this one. I said 320 milliohms. It's 3.2. So whatever we are, we're much under the 0.8 that that thing originally showed us. And that just goes to prove the point that when you're measuring something with low resistance, the four-wire method, also known as the Kelvin method, is the best way to do that job. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, Please give me a thumbs up. 
feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to Solder Stick for sponsoring this video. And a big thanks to you for watching it. That's it. I'm out. Peace.